Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. During my video about cut content I made not too long ago, I made this comment. Trust me, there was so much cut from that expansion, I could have made this video all about it. Well, since then, a big request I've been getting is just that. A video showing all of the cut content from the Warlords of Draenor expansion. So in this video, I want to show you everything that could have been. There are 20 things I consider to be major. Some of them were just ideas, and others were more concrete in the sense that they put a significant amount of work into it before deciding to scrap them. So, just a disclaimer before we begin, this list is compiled from several threads and forum posts on the internet. I'll have links to them in the description, so all credit goes to them. I'm just the guy making a video about them and going into a little more detail. So, let's start from the beginning. One of the biggest things scrapped is probably the introduction to the expansion. The story we got was that the Iron Horde completed the construction of the Dark Portal, and then they started invading Azeroth. We stormed through it and shut it down by releasing the power sources, Gul'dan, Turangor, and Cho'Gal. The original plan, however, as you can see from this map, was to enter Draenor through something called the Chronal Spire, a giant hourglass located at the edge of Tannen Jungle. This would have had something to do with the Bronze Dragonflight, the ones who delve in time travel. So the initial story is that we would have stopped the construction before they finished it. It was speculated that this was changed because the zone wasn't fully ready for release. So they just went with that short scenario where we shut down the portal and then escaped the zone. Number 2 is Fairlawn. This was originally announced to be another zone in the Warlords of Draenor. It would have been located to the east of Gorgrind as you can see by this map. However, they later announced that it would not be in release and would come in a later content patch. No one knew 100% what the zone would be about, but popular belief was that it would be similar to the zones like the Isle of Thunder or the Timeless Isles from Pandaria. But as time passed with no information about this zone, it was eventually announced that it would not be released during the Warlords of Draenor. Their reasoning was that it didn't fit with the story that they had set up. Instead, Tana Jungle sort of replaced it as the new zone that was added later in patch 6.2. For number 3, going back to the map for a second, you may have noticed another mystery island to the southwest. This one was supposed to be the fabled Ogre Island. The Ogres were a pretty big part of the old horde, and unfortunately, they didn't see too much action in this expansion. We did get the High Maul raid, but that was pretty much it. Everything else was with Orcs. This island was supposed to be the Ogre's homeland, but whether it was going to be a leveling zone or another timeless isle is unknown, as it was cut pretty early on. Next up, we have the scrapped major city for Horde. The original plan was to have two major cities added to Draenor, one for the Horde and one for the Alliance, but it just didn't pan out. The Bladespire Citadel was going to be the one for the Horde. It's located in the starting zone for Horde, Frostfire Ridge. Upon entering the area as Alliance, you're flagged and attacked by guards, which is a common thing with all faction cities. And you can still see signs of where stuff would have been. It's a nicely made massive structure, but due to time constraints, it was simply reduced to a questing area rather than a faction city. And similarly, the Alliance would have a city in their starter zone, Shadowmoon Valley, and that was Karabor. This was located on the eastern side of the zone, and it would eventually become the Black Temple due to the Legion's corruption, the home of Illidan Stormrage. So what we have in Draenor is the Black Temple before it became the Black Temple. And just like the Bladespire Citadel, you can see that the scope of this city was going to be huge. It used to have an interior in the works, but after they abandoned it, they just added a door to block the way, and it was hardly used throughout the expansion's duration. The only major thing you did here was a ceremony to get your legendary ring, but other than that, barely anyone got to see just how amazing this place looked. It's just another victim of the Draenor content cut. Instead of these two great cities, we instead got the War Spear and Storm Shield footholds in the PvP island Ashran. In my opinion, a far cry from what a faction city should be. There were also some battlegrounds and arenas in the works. No information about how they work, we were just left with some unused map files. They contained cutouts from the Bladefire Citadel shown earlier. One progressed far enough to be named, however. It was called the Heroes Through Time, and its purpose was speculated to be a battleground. As you can see, you have an alliance base in the north and a horde one in the south, and it was fairly big. Probably designed to be a 40 vs 40, just like Alteric Valley or the Isle of Conquest. But it was all dropped in favor of Ashran, Draenor's outdoor PvP area, similar to Wintergrass from Wrath of the Lich King, or Tol Barad from Cataclysm. There's also a winter version of Arathi Basin, which we're finally getting in the new Brawl PvP mode in 7.2. There does exist some footage of these, but none that I own. If you want to see them though, an awesome dude by the name of Haven Games has videos showing them off. I'll have links to those in the description if you want a more in-depth look. Next up we have cancelled scenarios. The only information we have about these is this picture that previews the new features of Warlords of Draenor. As you can see, the ninth bullet point boasts about new, normal, and heroic scenarios. If you don't know, scenarios are basically mini instances designed for three people. They were introduced in the Mists of Pandaria expansion, but ever since then they've been abandoned. They were planned to be in the Warlords of Draenor as well, but you guessed it, they were cut. Next up, we have the new ranking system for Arena called the Trial of the Gladiator. 
The way this was going to work would have been similar to the arena tournament realms. Every player would have access to equal gear and enchants, and during certain dates and times, if they did arena, they would gain ranking. You could still participate in the trial whenever you wanted so you could practice, but you would only gain ranking during the specified dates. They said that this would ensure that the best of best would be queuing at those times to provide the ultimate competitive PvP experience. And of course the higher rank you obtained, the better rewards you got. But once again, most of their PvP focus went into Ashran instead. Next up we have Pet Breeding. This is one I put under the abstract content category, meaning that it was just an idea floating around and it never took off in a major way. It comes from a single tweet by lead designer Corey Stockton, where he said that the current plan for the Garrison's pet stable is to be able to merge battle pets of the same family and to pick a breed. And doing so would give you a chance at a purple quality pet. This would have opened up a whole new dynamic to the pet battle system, but alas, I never saw the light of day. Since we're on the subject of Garrison's, there was actually a lot more planned for these. The biggest one is that you were supposed to be able to pick wherever you wanted to put them. As you know, the location of the garrison is limited to Shadowmoon Valley for the Alliance and Frostfire Ridge for Horde. The original idea was that you could pick any of these zones. The Crags of Gorgrand, the Plains of Nagran, the Spires of Iraq, Tan and Jungle, any of them. This gave a lot of depth to their customization and gave you the benefit of picking a zone with your favorite scenery or a zone closer to one of your favorite farming spots. An echo of this does remain. If you remember as you quested through the zones, you were able to build many outposts, but they just served as questing hubs rather than a full-blown garrison. And not only that, but the garrison themselves were supposed to be much more customizable. The ability to name followers, additional buildings, the ability to mount heads from elites you killed on spikes, and all sorts of stuff. Next we have the Grimrail Train. If you're not familiar with the Grimrail Depot instance, this one is in Gorgrand, and it's the one where you board a train and move from car to car. In addition to this instance, it was also planned that the Grimrail Train would serve as transportation around Draenor, similar to how the Deep Run Tram works. Remember, the original plan was to have no flying this expansion, so there had to be a substitute for it. It's nothing concrete, but it was speculated that it would connect to every zone and possibly even your garrison. Next up, we have a bunch of story elements. The story of Draenor was all over the place, even changing mid-expansion. I'll count all of this as one thing since some of them are kind of minor. Some of you may know Orgrim Doomhammer. He was the war chief of the original Old Horde. He was supposed to have a big role in the Gorgrand zone, however he was moved to the Talador zone and was killed by Blackhand along with Vindicator Murad. You may remember Kargath Bladefist as the first boss in the High Maul raid. On live servers you kill him in the battle, but on Alpha he escapes with his life, possibly opening up a return for him later down the road. He was the leader of the Shattered Hand clan, so honestly, seeing him being killed off as the first boss in a raid was surprising to a lot of people. It would be interesting to see what they originally had planned for him. Next, we have the possible Medivh cameo in the Alpha. He was the last guardian of Tears Fall, mentor of Khadgar, and the one who originally opened the Dark Portal. He was seen in the Frostfire Ridge Zone, talking with the other villains Gul'dan, Cho'gal, and Turangor. He has a shadowy appearance, so it was never 100% confirmed, but the resemblance is striking. And he had a deep history with Gul'dan, even entering psychic links with him while working on opening the Dark Portal. So, it's heavily believed to be some sort of corrupted version of Medivh. Unfortunately though, it was dropped before anyone could find out. Next up we have the biggest one, and that's the fact that Gromash Hellscream would be the final boss of the Warlords of Draenor. This was decided during the development stages of 6.2, but they changed it to Archimon at the last minute. The reason for this was because the previous raid tier was the Blackrock Foundry, an Iron Horde themed raid. They thought that having two orc raids in a row was too redundant, and instead changed it to the Fell Corrupted Hellfire Citadel raid, with Gul'dan summoning Archimon as the final boss. This led to a very awkward transition with quite a few plot holes that were never addressed. And lost with it was the new legendary weapon, Gorhal. This one isn't confirmed, but in the early stages of Draenor, a new model of Gorhal was data mined and it was labeled as a legendary weapon. This was the original weapon of Gromash Hellscream. No one knows whether it was going to be a straight up drop from Gromash or what, but I guess now we'll never know. Next we have the missing Worgen and Goblin model updates. One of the big things in Draenor were the character model upgrades. The models of the original 8 races along with the Draenor and Blood Elves were quite dated, so they were updated to bring them up to par. And along with those 10, the two new races of the Cataclysm expansion, Goblins and Worgens, were also supposed to be updated. They announced that the plan was for late 2014, but it never happened. For number 16, moving on to more minor stuff here, we have some cosmetic things. First are the class accessories. These were supposed to be cosmetic doodads for your class, a Librum for Paladins, Poisons and Daggers for Rogues, Quivers for Hunters, etc. They were going to update in appearance and level along with your character, and there were going to be different ones to choose from to give you more customization. It's unknown if they're still in development or not, but unfortunately, it seems as though they were dropped. And there was also a tabard collection system planned. 
This would allow you to collect tabards by clicking on them, which would clear up some bag space and allow you to switch them on the fly. As the game progresses, more and more tabards are added and they're starting to take up a lot of bag space. The tabard tab was the answer to this, but after the expansion was released, it was confirmed that they abandoned the project. For these last three, I did actually cover these in a recent video, but they're so major that I can't leave them out. So apologies if this is redundant for those of you who saw that other video. First, and probably the biggest out of all of these, is the Lost Raid tier, and that's Shaftrath City. This was announced to be a raid tier, along with High Mall and Blackrock Foundry, but due to time constraints, it was abandoned. Shatrath City still does exist in Draenor, you can find it in the Talador zone, but they just put a giant pink bubble over it and turned the outskirts into an Apexus crystal farming hub. One of the arguments against player housing in WoW was that it would take too many resources and that they would have to skip a raid tier. Garrisons could have been the reason for the Shatrath raid being abandoned, and to support this, if you look in the Alliance Garrison's graveyard, there's a graved marked Raid D tier. I personally think that this was the reason behind the story change with Archimonde being the final boss as opposed to Gromash like I explained earlier. Remember, the reason for that was because they didn't want to have two back-to-back -back Iron Horde raids with Blackrock Foundry and then a Gromash Hellfire Citadel. I think the original idea may have been High Mall and then Blackrock Foundry and then Shatrath as the Fell Raid and then the Gromash Hellfire Citadel. If you go to the Talador Shatrath, it's surrounded by demons so it would have made sense for this to be the demon raid of the expansion between the two Iron Horde raids. And they would have stuck with Gromash as the final boss of the expansion, which would have kept the story relatively intact. Like I said, just a theory though. Next up we have another lost zone, and that's Zangermarsh. This looked much different in the alpha, specifically having much more detail, and it was speculated to be another zone for you to explore. It most likely still would have been underwater, similar to the Vashir zone from Cataclysm, but what we got is just some underwater scenery. And lastly, in this zone we were supposed to get another world boss. It was a giant aquatic boss called the Fungal Whale, sort of a mutation of those old fungal giants that you saw in the Burning Crusade Zangermarsh. But since the zone was cut, so too was the boss. And that's it, all of the major stuff anyways. There are some more minor stuff, such as abandoned quest hubs, quest lines, and things of that nature, but if I listed everything, this video would be an hour long. Before I sign off here, something important to keep in mind is that any expansion is going to have cut content. It's just the way the development process works. The Burden Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, etc. had a lot of cut content as well. The only difference with the Warlords of Draenor really is that a lot of its cut content had a significant amount of work put into it before they pulled the plug. Only the people on the development team will ever know, but I think it's because of all of this half-finished stuff is why we had such a long drought for this expansion. A lot of time and energy was spent on stuff that never saw the light of day. It was 11 months between the major patches 6.2 and 7.0, which is insane for an MMO. And it's the main reason, along with garrisons, that many people write it off as the worst expansion for World of Warcraft. Something that the subscriber numbers also show. So, lots of possibilities. Maybe some are good calls, and maybe some are bad calls. I'll leave that up for you to decide. The only thing I care about is if you found the video interesting or entertaining. Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this, and I may go over the other expansions. It could be an interesting series. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching. Peace.